Hello everybody, I'm Chalo Borsma. I'm from the Netherlands, but currently working as a conservationist in Bolivia, where I protect the critically endangered and Bolivian endemic blue-throated maca, of which only 450 individuals are left in the wild. For me, working as a conservationist didn't really come out of the blue. I have always been inspired by nature, travels with my parents to the corners of, of Europe where we're searching for different bird species. But also my father was born in Indonesia and when I was eight years old we traveled with the entire family to Indonesia to see the habitat and the area where my father grew up. And I remember we did these amazing jungle trips where we've seen these large dipterocarp trees with beautiful hornbills flying in between them and also having close contact with an orangutan. Those were moments that I really can't forget and really make me inspired to do nature conservation and especially in tropical rainforest. So in 2014 I traveled to Bolivia. There is this opportunity as working as a Barbasul Nature Reserve coordinator out there in the Beni Savannas of northern Bolivia. Five years later I'm still around and have been discovering a lot about the Blue Throat of Macan working as the Barbasul Nature Reserve coordinator. We observed and discovered that the macaws were using the Barbasul Nature Reserve out there in the flooded savannas of northern Bolivia and literally these savannas flood for eight months and are then followed by a four month extreme dry season that these macaws congregate only there during the dry season and be just before the end of the dry season they, they migrate to their unknown breeding grounds because the macaws aren't breeding in a Barbasol nature reserve. So at one point, and I remember this was at the beginning of October, just at the start of the rainy season, I saw this big group of 40 blue-throated macaws in a playful mating spectacles where they were hanging upside down, individuals chasing each other, and I was aware that I was observing something very important because two weeks after I observed that amazing spectacle the birds were all gone and we had no idea where, we're, where they were migrating to. So in order to understand and better protect the species I organized two expeditions in search of their nests and the breeding habitat of the blue throated macaw. The moment we were on a horseback and hearing the blue throated macaws and seeing them fly away from one of these dead Moriche palm snacks and discovering their nest, that was really an amazing feeling. I also became aware that the habitat the macaws were using for breeding was completely different from that from the Barbasul Nature Reserve. And that was a big discovery that we've made uh, during these expeditions. In order to mimic the breeding habitat that we discovered, we came up with a very interesting and innovative nest box model mimicking that like dead snack of moriche palm in open savanna to see whether the macaws were interested in using that nesting habitat and staying year round in the Barbasul Nature Reserve. And we have already observed blue throated macaws interested in breeding in these, these nest boxes. We still have to wait for the first chick fledging from the Barbasol Nature Reserve nest boxes, but I think we are very close and these trial and error conservation actions are key to protect the species. And it was also clear to me that the macaws, when they're not in the protected Barbasol Nature Reserve, they're dispersed over cattle ranchers in the northern part of the Llanos de Mojos, the Beni Savannas. And therefore it's also clear that we need to work very close with cattle ranchers. So one of the things that uh, we have been developing and we're developing right now is sustainable ranching within a section of the Barbasol Nature Reserve where we are implementing best practices ranching techniques taking into account the protection of habitat for grassland birds, the giant ant deer, the main wolf, the puma, but also protecting the forest islands where the macaws are, are, are foraging and where the macaws are roosting. And I think showing ranchers 
an example like that where you can also show that productivity is much higher than traditional ranching that is a very important incentive for ranchers to change their behavior and to work towards a more eco-friendly uh, production of, of beef in these natural grasslands. I'm still surprised that I'm now working in the tropical and natural savannas of northern Bolivia where I always visualize myself working in the tropical rainforest. The rainforest that I've seen when I was eight years old when I went to Indonesia seeing those big dipterocarp trees and now working with cattle ranchers in natural savanna habitat. But to be honest, I love it. It is a very interesting to, to talk with the people from that specific ecosystem and understand the extremeness of the ecosystem and finding a method where both uh, um, ranchers benefit and nature benefits.